Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. I've had several requests now to do a video showing how to remove a starting pinion drive unit from a Caterpillar D2. Uh, so this is not going to be a one-size-fits-all video. This is only regarding this D3400 diesel engine that's found in the earlier D2s that have serial numbers starting with either 3J or 5J. If you have a later D2 with a serial number that starts with 4U or 5U, it's a different engine. That's a D311, and it has a governor set up on the back that's different from this D3400 that will pose problems that are not going to have to be addressed in this video. The steps are, for the most part, the same, but this is not going to be a step-by-step -step instructional video for that later D311. Uh, but if you also have an earlier Caterpillar Model 212 grader that also uses this D3400, these steps will also apply. And I know you guys are thinking, this is not in the chassis, so is this going to uh, be any easier to do it without tracks in the way and everything else? I assure you that all these same steps are the ones I use even when the engine is installed in the machine. So the first step of this process is going to be unbolting and either lifting the starting engine by a couple of inches or removing it completely. I've got this stripped down block just sitting in place, kind of acting as a prop but it will uh, help me to illustrate why disengaging the starting engine from the bell housing is an absolutely critical first step. So please bear with me while I adjust my starting engine prop to better show how this system works. And with the cover removed, you can see this large idler gear right here. Uh, the way this works is as the starting engine crankshaft gear spins, it powers the idler gear. The idler gear then drives the starting pinion. Uh, this idler gear extends down into this compartment so far that it actually locks this pinion drive housing in place until the starting engine has been lifted or removed completely. Now that is not to say that in the past people have not tried very hard to remove these uh, pinion drives without first lifting or removing the starting engine. But what happens then is after they've taken the bolts out that hold this drive unit to the bell housing, they'll start prying and they'll get maybe a quarter inch of separation here and then it stops. And then they fight with it a little bit more and it still doesn't move. So then they go and get an even bigger pry bar, pry even harder, and then that's when this happens. I've got another drive unit housing here to use as another prop. You can see where this one has been welded around that nose cone. They had to weld it all the way around and what they did the reason that this broke where it did was because they had not disengaged that idler gear from the uh, clutch shell gear here inside the pinion housing and when they started prying this out of the bell housing that idler gear stopped up against this uh, casting edge right here and when they put the power to it and really gave it a good pry they broke the nose cone right off of here. Now this is something that has been known to happen and I've taken several of these out that have been broken in this manner and then welded and repaired again. So that is why removing the starting engine is the absolutely critical first step to this process. And just one last bit of info on this before we move on. Uh, with the starting engine out of the way, you can now see why I prefer to remove them completely instead of just loosening them and jacking them up. This gives you the perfect opportunity to renew the base gasket uh, that's underneath the starting engine. You have this uh, water inlet on the bottom right here that usually will always leak, at least it does for me, because 60, 70 year old gaskets are never good to uh, try and reuse again. And you've got this rubber upper coolant seal that is just a pressure uh, press fit against this port in the back of the diesel cylinder head that can also be renewed at this time. Step number two now is going to be draining the oil from the starting drive compartment and the plug is down here on the bottom. Step number three now if possible is to lift up on this pinion engagement lever and engage those latches so that it shortens the entire assembly makes it easier to manipulate out of the bell housing and clear these governor parts. If it's not possible to latch your pinion engaged, it won't hold itself or you have some sleeve problems, you can still manipulate the whole drive unit out of the bell housing. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult. But, you know, if you're removing this drive unit because you have pinion latch problems, hey, you know, good on you. You're doing the right thing. If you go on YouTube here and you uh, search like uh, Caterpillar D2 startup, pony motor start, anything like that, it's amazing how many people you'll find manually holding this lever up, keeping that... Uh, pinion engaged with the ring gear and it's just not the right way to go about it. This arm and this mechanism was not meant to cope with the type of 
uh, stresses that are applied on it when the diesel engine starts firing and this pinion tries kicking out and you see the guys holding the uh, holding the pinion in manually and you watch that lever start bouncing and stuff when that diesel's firing. Um, this is not meant to be a bearing surface out here. These two pieces were only meant to come in contact with one another for however long it takes to get this pinion latched and that's it. I've got another little prop here to uh, illustrate uh, what can happen if you spend too much time manually holding this mechanism engaged. So I took this engagement lever out of another D2 that I uh, ripped down for parts and it was one that was used, abused, they did all the wrong things. You can see where they had worn the uh, end right off of this engagement arm and then they built it up with all kinds of weld and the thing that gets me after they built it up they wore it down again. Um, another thing, usually this arm will break if you're uh, manually holding that uh, pinion sleeve engaged with it. Surprisingly, this arm does not look like it broke, but the shaft actually broke. Now this end is what engages with your um, manual lever right here. And you can see from some old weld right here, they completely broke this end of the shaft off and then welded another piece of metal back on to uh, make it intact again and at least return it to service. So uh, for as many different times as they were into this thing, building this up, wearing it down, breaking it off, at what point would it have just been easier to fix your dang latches? I mean, guys, you're right here anyway. I just don't know you know why things like this happen but you see it quite a bit but anyway I digress enough with the uh, lecturing let's get back to the show step four now is something that you will not find in the manual but it's a thing that I like to do I remove the three bolts that hold the pinion clutch and brake shifter assembly to the side of the housing and I'll remove that whole thing you got to find just the right position for it but it will come out of there um, like I say, it's not in the manual. It's something I do like to do because it makes the entire assembly that you're trying to remove that much smaller. And as long as you're in the neighborhood, I also recommend removing the four bolts in the front cover. It will make removal even easier still. Step number five now is to remove the bolts that hold the pinion drive housing to the bell housing. There's four of them. One right here, one right there, number three is right there. And number four is down here and a little bit of a tip. You can get number four out if you first remove this bolt from the upper corner of the crankcase access panel. This is the point now where we can finally remove the drive unit from the bell housing. Sometimes these can stick, so be careful prying on these ears. They can break off. It's been known to happen. But usually if you can get it moving, it will come out. Unless you're the guy that decided he didn't want to remove a starting engine first, in which case you'd be cussing like a sailor right about now. But because we did all the necessary work in advance, taking it out now becomes very easy. So that's how I remove one of these uh, starting pinion drive units from a Cat D3400 diesel engine. You don't have to uh, take the governor housing off. They afford you plenty of room to get that drive unit out of there. The later D311s with the larger body governor are a much different situation, but that's another video altogether. And after you perform all the necessary repairs to the drive unit, you can reinstall it by just uh, reversing the removal steps. So pretty straightforward, not too bad at all. Hope this video helps, and thanks for watching, everybody.